Hi. In this session, we will look at inventory management policies with dynamic demand. We will look at some of these terms and concepts, and specifically, we will also examine uh, two very well-known theories. One is the continuous review policy, and the other one is periodic review policy. Um, as you recall, uh, probably from the other inventory management discussion with constant demand, where we talked about what is policy, right? So just a quick recap, inventory policies, policies are not huge stack of written papers, um, rather just two numbers, right? Um, how many or how much to order every time we uh, call our supplier to order and when do we order? So how many and when? How many and when? So two numbers will describe sufficiently uh, what is inventory policy, at least from our perspective of uh, understanding the theory. All right. So there are two policies that we want to discuss today. Um, continuous review and periodic review. So both are policies, both require two numbers. How many to order, when to order. All right. So except they differ in some kind of uh, assumptions and constancy. That is, in continuous review, we fix the order quantity all the time. That is, uh, we change the timing as to the when do we order uh, from our suppliers in order to meet the dynamic demand, changing demand, right? So in continuous review policy, we fix the order quantity. So sometimes this policy is also called a uh, um, fixed order quantity policy. The other extreme is that we vary the order quantity, as some of us are quite uh, familiar with, we order, we, we, we change the order quantity every time we order. However, the timing that we choose to order is fixed. So it, there is some periodicity to it, and that's called the periodic review. So review just means that we realize how high or how low our inventory on hand uh, is. Right, so review just means we realize, we understand the level of our inventory. So periodic review just means every now and then we fix the timing. Every period, uh, we will check our inventory and then order uh, different quantities right, to achieve certain uh, optimality in our inventory management. All right, so quick recap, policy, two numbers, how many to order, when to order. Our discussion today has got to do with dynamic demand. What is dynamic demand? We have now flimsy customers or more realistic customers who sometimes buy a lot and sometimes don't even appear, zero. So what that means to our inventory level is that we are now entering uh, this, this part of our inventory management where we have uh, customers who sometimes, uh, if we start off with, with inventory level Q, for example, right, then it will be a staircase, right? We don't sell, and then we sell some, and then we don't sell for a while, and then we sell some more, and then we don't sell, and then we sell a lot, because the, the customer has uh, pent up demand, and then we don't sell and we sell, right? So we will have a lot of these uh, scenarios. And then uh, our next shipment arrives and we will have a jump in our inventory and then we will uh, you know, sell some more, don't sell, we're selling some more, we're not selling, sell some more, sell a little bit, then we sell a lot, a lot, right? and then we sell a little bit, uh, we are not selling, we sell a little bit, then we don't sell, and so on. And then the next inventory arrives. All right, something like that. Okay, so the idea is that under such circumstances where the demand is now uh, fluctuating, changing, what are we going to do? How do we adapt the theory to um, accommodate such customers or uh, such realism, we should put it, right? So this is uh, basically time. As time passes, we have fluctuating levels of inventory because of fluctuating demand. Yeah. Um, so 
so the idea is uh, that we have dynamic demand but dynamic does not mean uh, does not mean chaotic demand chaotic demand means we have no idea how to describe it dynamic demand here is stochastic meaning that we have found a way to to describe it not on a day-to-day -day basis because uh, each day we are basically unable to predict with any kind of certainty about the quantity of the demand for that day so so we cannot do it in time but we can do it in aggregate all right so across time uh, suppose out of 100 days we manage to observe that um, so out of 100 days we manage to observe that 50 days right out of 50 out of 100 days 50 days the demand were 20 tires for each of those 50 days so we have we have um, 50 days right and another 25 days we have demand that were observed to be 60 tires let's just put it uh uh, for uh, 30 tires right so that's another um, 25 days and just for illustration say another 25 days the remaining 25 days out of 100 days we observed that the demand uh, was 10 tires so it happens to be 10 tires just just go along with me for a while all right so what I'm plotting, obviously, you can tell is a uh, is a histogram because the y-axis is frequency. So I gave some uh, illustrative numbers. I said out of hundred days, we have uh, fifty days, right? Observed to have customers coming in to buy twenty tires for each of those fifty days, and for twenty-five days, we observed that. 10, uh, 10 tires were sold and another 25 days uh, 30 tires were sold obviously those days don't line up like the first 50 days we sold 20 tires per day we don't do that right we will observe that um, first day might be 20 tires second day 10 tires third day 30 tires and they're all randomized in some sense however as an aggregate we observe this phenomenon right so then we might project further and say for the next 100 days we are at least advised as much by the past 100 days data that we can tell with reasonable confidence and objectivity that there will be 20 days, uh, no, sorry, another 50 days that the tires will be 20 uh, per day in demand and, and so on, right? So we can tell. Yeah. So, so this idea is not so difficult to follow, right? Um, and as we observe, I have kind of arbitrarily created uh, some sort of symmetrical uh, histogram here. Uh, but we can change it and uh, divide it into 100 days and obtain a relative frequency uh, chart. And of course, we can also change it into a probability distribution because uh, if we go into the theory, we basically will be operating using probability distribution. We will be we will not be having a simple three bar histogram. We will be having a lot more bars, or for that matter, we might even use a continuous distribution to approximate uh, discrete distributions because there are so many bars that we are um, not going to account for each and every one of them, right? So as we can uh, see, we can then perhaps even assume that well let q uh well let demand right let the daily daily demand i'm sorry um, this is not q this is daily demand we might as well let uh the daily demand be following some sort of simplified theoretical assumption uh distribution uh, in that sense example uh, maybe uh, let's say uh, eight all right which says that the daily demand little d 
follows normal distribution with a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 8, where three standard deviations to the left and to the right basically covers the whole uh, range of observations for daily demand. Right? So that will be the starting point of our discussion about stochastic demand. That means we have the ability to draw such a curve that our our customer's behavior, while it's not predictable on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, is allowing us to have some sort of a distributional way to describe it, probabilistic way to describe their behavior, right? So while probability often means that it's, it's random, right? And unpredictable, uh, from the theoretical perspective, stochastic demand, probabilistic demand uh, is having some sort of predictability, at least probabilistically, right? So, so uh, try not to confuse the two um, between undescribable chaotic demand and probabilistic demand, all right? So starting from there, where we look at the word stochastic, uh, we will then build our theory, right? First, let's look at the fixed order quantity demand or continuous review. Continuous review, as I uh, briefly mentioned, review means knowing the inventory level. So continuous review means we continuously know our inventory level. Now, what does that mean in real life? In real life, it means that uh, we have some sort of, uh, we, we don't stand in our warehouse and continuously count. We obviously do one time of counting and that's, that's uh, inventory checking, right? So we count and we record and then there will be devices, computers that constantly uh, add and subtract right the the deltas as customer purchase one tire we subtract one tire as customer uh, purchase five tires we subtract five tires so we whenever we you know uh, press our our mobile tracker check our database we always know the system always knows the current inventory level for our tires now we are selling tires right so our warehouse are full of tires uh, one look it's just a lot a lot and we have no idea no no no. that that doesn't mean we have no idea the system knows so so long as the system is tracking every incoming and outgoing tire we are we have knowledge of the inventory level at any point in time that's continuous review yeah okay so um why do we do that well because then it gives rise to the ability for us to say that uh have we reach the point in time but not in time but have we uh, reached the condition required by the event to trigger an order to our supplier is the event has the event arrived now the event arrives when the inventory level reaches a certain point we'll talk about that in a while but uh, having that condition implies that you are aware right at any point in time how high or how low your inventory level is and and that's the the starting point because you are unable to implement uh continuous review for example the system required to do that is very expensive um it needs a lot of space and your warehouse doesn't have a lot of space it needs it um knowledge and somehow you know your one two man show or a team doesn't have that ability then you cannot run this policy because you will never know at the right time when the inventory level has triggered the event to reorder yeah so so this policy requires that sort of implementation usually a little bit more expensive than than the next uh, theory we'll look at to, uh, in this session